years human societies depended on taxations for survival and this has been evident right from ancient medieval to modern day civilization today revenue generation through tax plays a vital role in the development of the economy of any nation and as Nigeria seeks to foster economic growth and development tax collection is imperative as an alternative source of revenue and viable means to fund critical and key infrastructural projects the introduction of Value Added Tax Act 2004 was therefore a game changer as a means for collection of tax on goods and services from source, making it easy to explore ways to diversify the sources of revenue generation to meet its developmental goals. It is in line with this that the tax powerhouse, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, went into partnership through a VAT direct initiative with the Market Traders Association of Nigeria, Martin. The umbrella body for all trading associations in the nation to, among other things, simplify payment and remittance for the market informal sector. Now, this is in line with the Tinubu administration's drive towards ease of doing business as well as increased revenue in the face of challenging economic crisis. What is the VAT Direct Initiative all about? What are the major benefits of the partnership? Now these and more we will find out from my guest, Johans Oluwatobi Wajola, SA2, the Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Services on Media and Communication. A very warm welcome to Wicked File. I am Jumwe Yasov. First, the news. <laughs> President Bola Ahmed Chinibu has arrived in Guinea-Bissau to attend the 63rd Ordinary Session of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government. After his arrival, the President visited the Nigerian contingent stationed in the country under the ECOWAS Stabilization Force. He expressed his appreciation and gratitude to the soldiers and their commander, General Al-Hassan Grema, for their dedication and service to Nigeria and their host country, adding that what Nigeria should continue to support democracy in West Africa and around the world. Brigadier General Grema expressed the appreciation of the troops to President Tinubu for being the first commander-in-chief in Nigeria's history to visit his soldiers outside the shore of the country. The president will participate in the summit, which takes place tomorrow, Sunday, July 9th. He is expected to address memoranda on pressing sub-regional issues, including report of the 50th Ordinary Session of the Mediation and Security Council covering security challenges faced by member countries. Other items slated for discussion include memoranda on the ECOWAS single currency program and the report on obstacles to free movement of goods on the Abidjan Lagos corridor. While in Guinea Bissau, the Nigerian leader is scheduled to hold bilateral meetings and have other engagements on the sidelines of the summit. President Chinibu is accompanied by some members of the Presidential Policy Advisory Council and other top government officials. Now joining me live from Guinea-Bissau is our correspondent Mohammed Garba Mohammed Nata'ala. Hello Garba, can you hear me? Welcome. Okay, Garba, the Thank summit. You, okay, the summit of uh, heads of state and government was preceded by the ministerial summit. Now, what were the main and burning issues on the table at the summit? Thank you, again. I spoke uh, at the Council of Ministers meeting. They have discussed a wide number of issues pertaining to West African subregions. They are more particular about economic growth. How can they finish integrate the businesses and other contingent and other uh, and other and other um, how can they how can they continue to integrate the region businesses as well as security stability? And then they also discuss about agriculture. Agriculture has been a major issue in the sub Saharan region. But later, they have decided to adopt Nigeria's practice on how they 
cost administration actually handles as a part of that. Rice production in particular, Nigeria was able to solve to become food sufficient. And that was the model they discussed at the Council of Ministers meeting. Also, they discussed about corridors where we will be doing businesses among member states, like the Lagos Abidjan corridors. President Tinubu is expected to meet five leaders of the West African subregion, that is Benin, um, Mali, Cote d'Ivoire, as well as Togo, as well as also the custom generals within those countries so that they can discuss about customs duty on how to facilitate movement of persons and goods and services as well. So, okay, of the with agenda. Well, actually, Guinea-Bissau is falling short of the economy. Madam, can you, uh, can you repeat yourself? I said with the summit expected to focus on enhancing bilateral relations within the ECO sub region and also improving trade, what can be expected on discussions? Yes, to break, yeah. and multilateral. So what can be expected to on the discussion to breaking barriers the main, hindering the implementation of the African Free Trade Area Agreement? We talked about the Abidjan Lagos corridor here. Yes, yes. yes. Some of the barriers are usually revolving around custom duty. You know, movement is not easy within all those corridors. I might say industrial activities are going on well. The elites are enjoying most of the businesses and most of the protocols set by equals. But when you talk about the low income earners, small businesses, they don't seem to integrate and assimilate what the equals is doing. So when President Nubu with most of the leaders in the Equals uh, uh, region, in the Equals uh, community, who will be discussing on some of these protocols on how they can remove all those barriers and those obstacles, delaying the progress of the Africa free movement. Okay, Garba Nata'ala from Guinea-Bissau, where the president is meeting with other African leaders to discuss on the way forward for the West African region. Thank you so much, Garwa. Thank you very much. Equus countries have concluded their submissions to their principles ahead of the 63rd Heads of State and Government Summit, which is expected to adopt protocols hindering the progress of African continental free trade agreement in the sub-region. Several other issues were raised that formed part of the resolution passed by ECOWAS member states during the closing of the ministerial regional meeting convened in Guinea-Bissau. Now let's join Gamba Lata Ala for the report. After an engaging exchange, the 90th ordinary session of the ECOWAS Council of Ministers have concluded their report on the financial situation of the institution and the implementation of African Continental Free Trade Area, as well as determined the status of political developments in the republics of Mali, Burkina Faso and Guinea, among other issues, culminating from various obstacles hindering the economic viability of the West African subregion and the Sahel. Nobody will develop this region for us and uh, it is incumbent on all of us to work hard for the development of our region and this is what ECOWAS is doing. In a message by the chairperson, Guinea-Bissau's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Suzy Babuza, and Permanent Secretary of Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Brian Lamawa, expressed appreciation for the success recorded over the years and renewed vigor shown by member states to achieve ECOWAS goals. Other issues resolved include the memoranda on the ECOWAS single currency program and obstacles along the Abidjan-Lagos corridors. The council took another very important decision on having a regional strategy on road maintenance. Uh, this is a very important decision which uh, uh, will be able to address some of the bad roads within the regions. In preparation for the 63rd Heads of State and Government Summit, 
President Tinubu is expected to hold a meeting with four heads of state and government, ministers of foreign affairs, trade, and controller generals of customs from Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin, and Togo on sub regional issues. From Guinea Bissau, I am Garabo Muhammad Natala, NTA News. Thank you, Galba. Now, the panel of inquiry set up by Alhambra State Government has confirmed that. Ms. Omar Ejikeme manipulated her unified tertiary matriculation examination results, noting that she actually scored 249 as against 362. The panel, in its eight page report, recommends that Ms. Omar should immediately tender an all reserved written apology to the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, her school, Anglican Girls Secondary School, Uruagua Newi. The state government and she should undergo psychological counseling and therapy. The eight-member panel had, had been set up by Anambra State Governor Professor Chukuma Saludo to investigate the controversy between the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board and Mesoma, whose UTME result was questionable. With the mandate of making its findings public, besides a number of red flags highlighted by JAMB on the result, also shows different date of birth different registration number and notification of results templates that has been discarded since 2021 amongst others. Now, the father of the 19-year-old Ms. Omar Ejekeme has apologized to Jam and Nigerians for his daughter's falsification of her UTME result. He said she lied to him. Chinyere Fesi Okoye also reports that with this latest development, the sum of three million scholarship offered her by an Inewi businessman has been withdrawn. Upon arrival at the residential home of Mr. Romanus Ejikeme, father of Ms. Omar Ejikeme, Ms. Omar saw us and took to her heels but we were able to get the reaction of the father. I don't expect that she will do this kind of thing. She did what she's supposed to do. Are you getting me? She's brilliant enough to avoid this kind of thing. And I'm still apologize to the whole Nigerian Sanjam to pardon. Efforts to get reaction of any member of the panel of inquiry set up by the Anambra State Government and the school authority at the time of filing this report did not yield positive results, but some concerned citizens speak. Uh, generally, I see it as a reflection of uh, you know, the level of uh, moral and social decadence. If she knew that she was to be punished accordingly, I think that she wouldn't have been tempted, you know, encouraged to get into that. Two or three ladies or one, uh, one lady who has a human heart can take her in and discover how. You need to unearth how. Because if she's a teenager and an adult is somewhere deceiving her, planting all those rubbish in her, the rot would have fallen on that person, not Miss Omar. How can she manipulate Jam website in her phone? And she was unable to show you how she manipulated it. The first mission is to man show us how you did that. Meanwhile, Newi based businessman who earlier awarded three million naira scholarship to Ms. Summer in a press statement says the scholarship has been withdrawn following the UTME score manipulation. From Newi, Chinyere Fesi Okoye, NTA News. And joining me in the studio is Jam spokesman Dr. Fabian Benjamin. You're welcome to Weekend File. Thank you very much. Uh, I consider this a very huge privilege. It's a pleasure to have you. Let's go straight to the point. Before now, Jam's experience was that of multiple registration by candidates who wanted higher marks. Today, it is candidates inflating or forging higher UTME marks. Who do you think is responsible for this and what? I think uh, at this point, we should be looking at uh, the lesson learned from what had happened in the last uh, a week and couple of days that a 19-year-old girl was uh, almost setting the nation ablaze is something that all of us should be ashamed of. If we have uh, a society that cares about values, a society that believes uh, its uh, agencies, institutions, I think we wouldn't have gotten ourselves in this kind of a mess. But the good news is that at least uh, now the public will know the kind of system that the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has, that we have built uh, credibility over a period of time and uh, 
our system is so secure that nobody can uh, at least uh, penetrate. I want to make this very clear because I, one of the commentators was talking about uh, website or whether hacking and stuff like that. Our system was never temp te tempered with. What this uh, lady did uh, was just to get a particular slip that we'd used, we had used in 2021, manipulated the figures on it, uh, as, just as she said, maybe in a business center with her phone. If you go online, you see so many apps that could assist you to do some of these things. And then she printed it out and was deceiving the gullible public. Let us at this point begin to build our trust in government agencies. Uh, the society, Nigeria is not as bad as others we want us to believe. It is quite unfortunate that even people that should know, those who, are, who have held public office, who were given certain responsibility, could stoop down so low to begin to believe some of these things that one could sit down and then unravel within a second or, two, or a minute. I want to say that, look, our system was never tempered with. We are not uh, discouraged. We will continue to serve Nigeria with integrity and we will do the needful to ensure that such a thing never happens again. Yes, um, you talked about the lessons learned. Now, what is government doing to bring down this type of you know, sites on the website where students can just go in? And do you, would you put a time on how long this has been going on? Well, it's not the role of government alone. There is no society that is built by only government. Everybody's hand must be on deck for us to build a nation that will be, all of us will be proud of. We, today we have over a hundred and something cases in court of such uh, developer of such apps that we are prosecuting here and there. We will get wary over this particular issue and if we are not careful, we will begin to be distracted from our primary responsibility of conducting the examination, selection examination for admission into tertiary institution. We want to call on everybody because when this case came up, it is natural that the first person that had seen this thing would have done some work. If you look at what one of the, I think Professor Kapo was saying, that if we have a society that cares about value, at least even the principal of that school, even the teachers in that school, should have questioned this particular, I, I don't believe it's only Mr. Mind in that school that sat for this examination. If out of 1.6 million candidates, and then you are bringing something that is strange, at least somebody should ask question. How come you have something that nobody is parading? These are ways that you could have at least, the center that she said is, I'm not sure it's in Anambra State. And it's common that you should know that, okay, this is not the address of this center. So there are so many things that have so many red flags on that particular paper that she was carrying that at least a rational mind will just know that, look, what you are parading is not genuine. More so that even when we came on air, provided statistics, provided necessary uh, uh, information, uh, evidence to prove that this is not from us, some certain individuals still didn't believe. That is the kind of nation that we have. But I want to believe that with what had happened now, with what people have seen, it should be a big lesson for everybody. That whenever such things come up, we should always uh, uh, <coughs> make haste slowly in making uh, comments, in making contributions, so that at the end of the day we won't find ourselves where most Nigerians have found ourselves in the mix of this particular saga. Okay, in 30 seconds, do you think putting a price tag on the best candidate is the right thing to do? Maybe this is what must have cost it? Well, for us, I feel like whatever is being given to people that have done well in education is even not up to what should be given. People that deserve honor should be given. If you go to the entertainment industry today, somebody will just uh, dance somewhere and is giving hundreds of millions. So education should also have a share of such uh, uh, honor and awards and all this thing. But in doing that, let us do it. Let us follow the right path in doing it. It is only natural that when you want to confirm anything, the, is, the issuing institution should be also be taken into consideration. We have MTM Foundation. Whenever they want to give away, they write to us. Give us the first base, the best 10, the best 20 and all this okay, thing. Dr. Other Baby. banks also do the same. So if innocent wants to give a award or whoever wants to give a award, you can also at least write to us that we should give you the best candidate and all this. Or you wait for when we announce it, not to go to believe anybody that is parading any paper on the streets. Okay, Dr. Fabian Jam spokes person. Thank you so much for coming on Weekend 5. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, 171 students have been matriculated into various departments at the third matriculation ceremony of Thomas Adewumi University, Oko Iresi, Kwara State. Vice Chair Chancellor Thomas Adewumi University, Professor Francisca Oladipo, told the matriculating students to take advantage of the institution's innovative curriculum to become enterprising and self-reliant individuals upon graduation. Kindly Omolosho completes the report. Thomas Adeumi University, Okoyerese, runs 21 courses in six faculties, all accredited by the National Universities Commission. The university provides cutting-edge, world-class education through teaching and research 
thereby playing an important role in economic recovery and making sure the society is resilient in the future. We are putting so much effort to ensure that our facilities are world class, that our students have access to materials from MIT in the USA, that we have partnership with Oracle, with Microsoft, with uh, uh, IBM. Someone's other university has begun the vanguard of changing the narratives by teaching the students how to behave and conduct themselves appropriately. Founder Thomas Adeumi University, Dr. Johnson Adeumi, wants the students to see their admission into the university as a journey that will transform their dreams to reality. Matriculating students to pay attention to the oath that they have taken today. The oath dictates exactly what they need to do to be able to graduate in this university. I will try to work very hard and become a first class student. I tend to work hard and open my own hospital. Founded in year 2020, Thomas Adeumi University, Okoyerese, aims at becoming a major key player in the delivery of university education of the highest quality in Nigeria while producing graduates with skills that will transform the social economy of the country. Kaindi Omolosho, NT News. Now let's bring you up to speed with other reports. The Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs has asked the Swedish authorities to investigate the burning of Quran in front of the central mosque in Stockholm. The council in a statement urged the Swedish authorities to make the findings public and ensure that justice is done. While condemning the action, the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs urged Muslims the world over to remain calm and continue to be peaceful and law-abiding. We'll take a break. When we return, we can find, we'll continue. Do stay. Thanks for rejoining us. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, is collaborating with the Market Traders Association of Nigeria, Matan, to promote awareness of value-added tax VAT in the marketplace as it concerns the informal sector. Bossidi Abel has details. Nigeria, one of the largest economies in Africa, has more than 80% of its population in the informal sector, according to the International Monetary Fund. And going by the findings of SBM Intelligence, 98% of businesses and entrepreneurs within this sector are annual taxpayers. The survey, however, notes that the majority of such taxes never come into the coffers of either the federal or state revenue collection agencies. With this realization, the Federal Inland Revenue Service and the Market Traders Association of Nigeria are synergizing to block revenue leakages. This collaboration hopes to ensure that the collection and remittance of value-added tax VAT from this sector eliminates multiple taxation. If your turnover is below 25 million, you are not, you know, expected to charge and remit VAT. We are not going after these very small, small businesses who are, are trying to make a living. I just want to debunk that uh, perception, you know, since this was uh, launched. Already, the Matan Market Traders Association have a technology that they are using to enumerate their members. So we are just supporting them to make that as robust as possible so that the enumeration captures the traders, you know, uh, details as well as issues them a team number. As the biggest player in Nigeria's market space with membership of over 40 million traders across the country, a combined monetary and evaluation team comprising both organizations is expected to be formed to ensure transparency and accountability of the project operations. We have devices that we start deployed to the different uh, markets. From these devices, uh, once a trader uh, comes forward to make daily payment, for instance, an e-receipt is generated from the, the POS device or whatever device. Uh, if, if, uh, an e-receipt is generated. That e-receipt contains unique information about that transaction that that bill has made. All of this information uh, goes into the system uh, to ensure that uh, 
there's proper accounting. That Bringing all these associations together, sensitizing them to ensure that they all keep into the bad direct initiative. This new government is trying to do something that will benefit we, the Nigerians, especially the youth. If you can see, just the youth here all in this office. This initiative stakeholders say will improve VAT collection and revenue base at sub national level, where citizens will ultimately benefit as the country experiences economic development. In Abuja, Bosso de Ebo continues. Thank you, Bosso de. Thank you, Bosse Day, for that insightful report. And that sets the tone for our conversation. And my guest is Johans Oluwatobi Wajola, SA to the Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Services. He's a media and communication special advisor. Thank you so much for coming on Weekend Five. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, let's talk about this partnership and what it entails. <laughs> well, um, it's a partnership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what 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 really? First is, of its uh, kind, actually. Well, the first, yes, indeed, the first of its kind. I I, I think it's it's good to look at this from a historical point of view. Uh, that the the FIRS has uh, always seen the informal sector as an untapped area um, in terms of um, of, of of taxation. Uh, we we have always believed that there is. Um, there's so much more that can be done with the informal sector in terms of getting that sector to, to or bringing them or making them formal, so to say. Uh, and um, other attempts in the past have been made, but they did not, you know, see the light of day. And what we now have is a successful partnership with um, the, the, the mother body and and for us, we, we believe that it's a, it's a stepping stone to, to bring in that, that sector outside the scope of, um, of, of the tax net and, you know, bringing them in. When we, what, what are the terms or, 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 you know, wide terms of this partnership? One, it's to enumerate the sector, to get members of people in the marketplaces. And, and also it's important to restate that the marketplace we're talking about is, is not necessarily the, the, the plantain seller, the bole seller, or the, the fish seller, or the, 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 the granite tomato seller. It's, it's people who are involved in business in the marketplace who have not registered their businesses or who have not even registered for taxes. Those are the people we are looking at here. And people who transact over... Um, over a certain threshold within a period of a year, and that is uh, what the law um, requires. That is 25 million, uh, uh, 20, and 25 um, annual turnover of 25 million naira. And uh, there are other VAT exempt um, items which we are not expecting um, those those traders to to you know to to join the VAT direct initiative, which include those who um, trade in in medical. Um, services, um, agricultural services, the yam sellers, the food items and all of that, they are exempt from the VAT direct initiative. But we're looking at people who are in the electronics business, people who sell phones. Uh, the, the, the famous Balogun market, for instance, where you buy expensive materials uh, and millions of naira is transacted in, in, in these marketplaces on a day-to-day -day basis. You go to Kantin Query in, in, um, in Kano okay. State, uh, millions of naira, gold traders, you know, and there is, they are not captured in the tax net. So th 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 this partnership is going to, first and foremost, enlighten and educate the traders through the umbrella of Martin on their obligations as taxpayers or their obligations you know as citizens or as businesses um, get them to understand that oh as a as, as a as a as a businessman you are, you are selling electronics you should keep records as a businessman uh you you ought to pay taxes this is why your taxes are important for you to uh, are important for you to pay you know and all of those um things we we also would as part of this uh initiative and very very crucial to this um partnership is 
the enumeration. Now, enumeration in this context is simply assessing, registering, and assessing the membership of Martin. Uh, Let's okay. validate, you know, this well over 40 million members that they have across the country. Let's know who is who. Let's well, it's know a what huge they are it's, a, it's a huge boost to indeed, ease of doing indeed, business in Nigeria. And, and you see, another crucial thing that has formed, that forms part of this collaboration between uh, the Federal Inland Revenue Service and Martin is the issue of tackling multiple taxation in the marketplace. Over the conversations that have taken place between um, the, the leadership of Martin and the leadership of the, of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, one of the major things that has been raised by the, by the Market Traders Association is multiple taxation. Okay. The activities of touts, the activities of miscreants, uh, self-imposed tax collectors will come and say, okay, fine, today you are paying roofing fee, tomorrow you are paying this uh, levy and all of that. The, we don't know where the money goes to. And of course, it affects even the price of, of goods and services. Now, this partnership, working with Martin, working with the Joint Tax Board, the state internal revenue services and crucially the security agencies uh. would work towards ensuring that the taxes that are collected in our marketplace are the legal taxes taxes that have already been specified by law they can be collected by the federal government they can be collected by the state government and they can be collected by the local government so we are work this three or these three heads i would say the federal, or fe yes. the federal no, largely largely the federal inland revenue service martin and the security agencies okay. will work towards ensuring that only these um, legal taxes are collected and are collected properly and are well accounted for. So you don't have a situation where a trader has paid every day. One, he will pay one 1,000 Naira in the name okay. of one due. He pays 600 Naira in the name of another due. He pays, you know, so many things happening in the marketplace and they are not even seeing the benefits to themselves. So that in itself is a long-term journey for us towards sanitizing the marketplace and also harmonizing our 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 tax system which is you know fragmented mm. and uh and and lacking uh, lacking uh, any form of harmonization yes indeed toby it will sort of lessen the burden on on businesses so we'll take a break when we return our conversation will continue to stay thank you yeah, welcome back and this is Weekend File and I still have my guest in the studio, Johans Oluwatobi Wajola, he's ex to the Executive Chairman Federal Inland Revenue Services on Media and Communications. Toby, yes, the FIRS has been successful in the deployment of technology through the tax, ProMax and the tax collection. Now, how is technology going to work with Matan using the unified systems technology that we mentioned earlier? Uh, so, so, so let, let's start from um, the Tax Pro Max first, of, first and foremost. The Tax Pro Max is, uh, is the FIRS homegrown solution um, for, for tax administration generally. And what has this, what does the, what does the Tax Pro Max do? Well, the Tax Pro Max, the taxpayer can register for tax, um, file their tax returns, uh, and also uh, pay their taxes uh, as at January 2023, the, the service introduced a, a, a new module, which is the, the e-tax clearance certificate, the ETCC. So uh, in, at the click of a button, a tax player can get his TCC, you know, via the Tax Pro Max. So that is the Tax Pro Max on one hand. On the other hand, we have what we call the Integrated Revenue Management System, which is uh, an automated solution that is owned by Martin. And this solution was launched in 2021 by Martin. They have used this system to enumerate their members. They have used this system to um, collect dues for their members. They've used the system to harmonize the collection and the payment of 
personal income tax um, to the to the state governments where they operate for their members what FIRS is going to be doing uh, even though a lot of the details of the of the handshake between um, the two technologies are still being fine-tuned but largely what we are going to be seeing is a situation where Martin's existing platform will continue to operate will be more or less upgraded our technical teams are working with uh, with Martin to upgrade that that becomes the platform for for Martin to enumerate its members it's the activities of its members both the financial activities and also the um, uh, the business activities as, as well and also there would now be a handshake between the tax pro max and um, the Martin, Martin system which would now through what um, what our tech guys would say uh, an api so all of that would now translate to you know the the system where you can now um, collect and account for the taxes that are collected from um, the from from the from uh, the the market traders association but like i said a lot of the details of that of this is still being fine-tuned you know between the technical teams uh, and the uh, and uh, of Martin and also the FIRS and as we as we finalize and you know fine-tune all of them we will now be able to engage with uh, with with the members and properly educate them on how the processes will go but right now currently a lot of what we're focusing on is on the enlightenment letting Nigerians know that this partnership exists this is what the details of the partnership um, are these are the details um, also we are enlightening their members, especially on tax education, okay. so that they understand what their obligations are as citizens and why it pays to pay your tax, like we often say. And then on the other arm, and crucially, is the enumeration, which is a very, 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 you know, is a handful process, getting to know who are these members you say are your members um, what are their business activities uh, what are their turnovers and all those necessary details that we need okay toby you've been talking about numbers what's the numbers like and um, how can it boost you know the revenue generation in the country because president tunibu in his inaugural speech said the economy of this country is on the burner we must look into it absolutely absolutely i think i think uh, at the core of this is a fact that we 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 need to expand on the tax nets the current numbers though i i, I don't have that off the cuff of our of, of nigerian spain tax is a very negligible and embarrassing amount uh, and these are the initiatives that are actually being um, you know brought up by the FIRS to say that see we need to expand the tax net we need to get more Nigerians to understand why they should pay their taxes and also you know how they should pay their taxes uh, uh, we're, we're, we're really looking at ensuring that the informal sector like um, your report had earlier stated and though it's um, it's common knowledge over 80 percent which constitutes about 80 percent of our economy uh, why and over 90 percent of that of that of that amount of uh, of people are not paying their taxes they don't even understand how to pay their taxes and why to pay their taxes uh, the, 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 this is a long-term journey to bring this huge number of people, in people into the tax net and if you if if uh, if we're to go by the membership of martin as uh, as stated 40 million businesses or 40 million members engaged in one business or the other ranging from different things even if we were to just bring 50 percent even if we were to bring just 25 percent of that uh of that of the body even 10 percent of that body Would into you the tax net it was going to change things dramatically and it's a stepping stone to a long term uh to a long-term journey and also uh, a stepping stone to a long-term entrance into the informal sector which like i said earlier is is largely untapped in terms of the tax conversation okay your hands olua toby wajola essay to the executive chairman federal inland revenue services media and communication thank you so much for coming on weekend five it's i pay pleasure. my tax <laughs> it's taken out you, of my salary anyway <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming it's a pleasure we'll take a break when we return weekend file continues to stay 
Yeah, welcome back and still on the economy as part of strategies to boost the economy of Africa. Stakeholders at the Rabat conference have advocated youth engagements and improved bilateral trades in Africa. Osim Idemodu shared their perspectives during a conference on Africa, growth and integration in Rabat, Morocco. Rabat, the capital city of Morocco, is fast becoming a rallying point for African countries as part of the socio-economic strategies by Morocco to build a united and strong economy in the African continent through interactions and investments. Bela Pfizer from Nigeria and Brian Lante from Ghana are students in Morocco. They are opportune to be part of the conference being championed by Morocco to promote mutual cooperation and development amongst African countries has always been big when it comes to bringing African countries together, whether it's from the, the north to the south, the east or the west. So a program like this just uh, shows how far they go. But we need all together to have in mind that we have youth and we have populations that need jobs and works and employment and we need to create a lot of opportunities for jobs. We cannot do it by, by being isolated. And Part of the issues identified as bottlenecks to the growth of trade in Africa include unnecessary trade restrictions by the imposition of visa travels amongst African countries. Uh, unity and development, because I think that's one thing we've lacked in a long time in Africa, like um, African countries coming together. So I think with this, it would definitely promote unity. But also universities and academies for football and for sports. These are also infrastructures. And these kind of infrastructures, all these kind of infrastructures have major impact on societies and the social impacts. The recommendations emanating from the conference support the efforts of the King of Morocco and African countries to promote sustainable cooperation and development of African talents as well as capacity building. In Rabat, Morocco, I'm Austin Edemodu, NTA News. Spot update is next. The third Governor Doye Diri National Scrabble Championship is ongoing in Yenagoa as African champion Enoch Nwali topped the table with 9 wins out of 12 games with a plus 891 cumulative points to take the honours at the expense of Godwin Victor with 7 wins and a plus 740 cumulative points while Doko Oluwati Milayi came third with 624 cumulative points. Timmy Pere Ohia reports that the two-day event serves as final preparations for the Nigeria contingents to World Scrabble Championship holding in the United States from July 15. For the Team Nigeria that is going to the U.S. to participate in the, um, the Scrabble World Championship, it's, go it's, it's, it's going to be a very keen competition. Super Falcons forward Asisat Oshoala has been shortlisted for the 2023 Ballon d'Or Award. The announcement was made by France Football, organizers of the award. Nigerian star was nominated for the Socrates category, which identifies the best solidarity actions carried out by committee champions. She is one of the five individuals shortlisted for the award. In another development, the opening match of the 2023-2024 season of the Nigeria Women's Football League recorded 21 goals in six matches played Saturday as Pelican Stars cruised to a comfortable 2-1 victory while Quara Ladies lost by a goal to two to Dana Ladies in Group A, while in Group B, Sunshine Queens beat Prince Karim by a lone goal. Elsewhere, the Confederation of African Football, CAF, has approved the cancellation of the playoff round second preliminary of the CAF Confederation Cup after a meeting in Morocco. The 16 winning clubs of the second preliminary round will qualify directly to the group stage of both the CAF Champions League and the Confederation Cup beginning from the 2023-2024 season. Still on football, the president of Nigeria National League side, the FC1 Rocket of Eket, and member of NFF board in Essien, has bemoaned the inability of his club to secure promotion to the Nigeria Premier Football League at the end of the NNL Super 8 in Asaba, Delta State. It is a shame that we've let our supporters down. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. 
Vice President Kashim Shatima condoles the family of Lekt Mukhtar Alkali in Medjugri. Aged 57, Mukhtar Alkali, who was the Vice President's nephew, died on Friday in Abuja after a protracted illness. His funeral prayer was held at the family home of the Vice President in Medjugri. Lekt Mukhtar Alkali was former Provost Muhammad Lawan College of Agriculture, Medjugri. He survived by one wife and 11 children, among other relatives. A quick check on the weather prospect for Nigeria and the rest of the world is next. Well, that's NTA. That's Weekend File this week. Thanks so much for watching. I am Jumai Yusuf.